Good morning, JSBC. We are blessed to be able to witness another wonder. We are looking and expecting signs and wonders this morning. We are believing God to touch each and every heart. with the peace that they need. We are believing God today for the miraculous. God has blessed us to be able to assemble again. And that is a blessing. This, this morning, I want to talk about the power of your words. I want to talk about the power of your words. I want to inform you that you can have a better day. and you have something to say about it, you have something to do about it, speaking the truth will make a difference. Your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. What you say uh, as a result of what you think will determine the life that you live. In fact, the Bible tells us, as a man thinketh, so is he. So as a result of that, usually uh, we discover at times we will say things and we will try to figure out where is it coming from. But somewhere it has been lodged in our conscious and it comes out. Sometimes at the wrong time, and sometimes at the right time. But I want, to, I want you to know today that you can discover a new joy, a newfound abundant life through the words that you speak. Especially when you begin to line your words up with God's word. It will not take long, just a few minutes a day can change your whole life. I believe that, I believe that, I believe that. And here I am today as a practical reminder with fresh insight to help you stay focused, keep you focused on God's promises so that you can begin a journey into a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life, the life you deserve. Uh, the power of words, our words make a difference. You can use them to encourage, you can use them to discourage, Amen. you can use them to inspire, help, or harm. Your words make a difference. You can build up someone with your words, and you can certainly tear them down with your words. You can increase or decrease, as a result of your words, the joy in your life and in the lives of others. In this message, I want to share with you how you can begin to say what God says and experience change in every area of your life. And I'm, I'm delighted to stand before you today with an opportunity to bring a word of encouragement. Because I do believe, and this is true, that if you change your words, you change your life. <laughs> you change your words, you change your life. That's how it goes. 
Your words can increase or decrease the level of, uh, of joy. It affects your prayers. It can have a positive or negative effect on those around you, including yourself. Sometimes we need to step back and hear what we are saying to ourselves as well as to others. few years back someone gave me some scripture cards and you try to read them and you know you know some of us are better at re remembering uh, um, uh, the, the scriptures than others for some folks it come easy uh, for me I ha really have to work at it uh, but I but I know what I agree with and I agree with the word amen, amen. I know what I agree with I agree with the word and I hope you're in that boat today so that you can begin to speak, begin speaking what God's word says about you and uh, will help you to discover the life you've imagined. Now, standing on the promises of, of God, we've, we've had books by uh, uh, authors that just talked about and just wrote about the promises of God and that is good. But you have to read it, you have to get in it, you have to incorporate it into your life. It must become a part of you. You have to meditate on it. When, and, and one of the reasons why we are a little hesitant about that is because we like understanding of how powerful our words are and how powerful God's word is. The direction of your life will change for the better and it'll set a new course that will, that, that will impact generations. So I want you to start this morning with me by saying and declaring, be it unto me According to your word, Lord God. Father, today, I choose to believe the promises of your word. And I confess that with you, all things are possible. I choose to invest in your word. In spite of what I'm going through and what I see others going through, I believe that your word is greater than any circumstance. And as I focus on the truth, I will overcome because of your promise, promises to me. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you to give me the faith, the wisdom, and the patience to see it through. To see your promises come to pass in my life and in the lives of others. Amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. 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 I'd like to share something with you that has made a, a, a tremendous difference, a big, big difference in my life. And the reason I'm sharing it is because I believe it will make a difference in your life as well. I'm not talking about just a minor change. I'm talking about a major shift in improvement. And I'm talking about a truth from God's word that changed the direction of my life. Now your words determine the life you live. And a lot of times we've taken that for granted. I took it for granted. 
Um, it does not matter what others are saying about you. Uh, it does not matter what others think about you or your circumstance or circumstances. With God's guidance, you can set your life on course for a new direction. In the Bible, there's enough truth to dispel every lie of the enemy. Every lie that he's whispered to you about your past, about your present, and about your future. But it does matter where you invest your time and your energy. In other words, where's your focus? Where's your focus? It is so true that the words you speak, whether they are positive or negative, have the ability to affect your mind. See, now, I, I, you, can tell, you can tell yourself that you are ugly. You can be the most beautiful person in the world, but if you keep telling yourself you're ugly, after a while, you're going to appear ugly to yourself. Now, 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 now I'm, I, I, won't, I, I'm, I just want to say this. There are people who are thin enough, but because there, there's a, a, an imbalance or some problem with their thinking psychologically, they think they're not thin enough, so they continue to decrease in size to the point that you can see skin and bone, but they still don't think that they are small enough. And they say to themselves, I don't look right. And then there are people, <laughs> just the reverse. But they say, I'm all right. I'm country fine. And I don't care what you say. It doesn't bother me. I just got a little more to go around. So the tongue can affect you in an adverse way. Now, if your words are positive or negative, they have the ability to affect your mind, your will, and your emotions. Proverbs. The 18th chapter, verse 21 in the NIV says, puts it this way. And before I share this scripture, well, let me share the scripture first. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, it is really your choice, but you can talk yourself to death or you can talk yourself to life. Amen. See, sometimes we are waiting for others to encourage us. But you have to encourage yourself. You gotta have something on reserve that once you've encouraged others, you gotta have something on reserve so you can encourage yourself. Amen. Say amen, church. Amen. But the tongue has the power of life and death. But you have a choice. You can choose to speak words that will bring life, longevity, life to your spirit, to your family, to your friends, to your future, and certainly your present. 
but your words must line up with God's promises. That's why I keep sharing with you, be it unto me, according to your word, Lord God. Not according to my circumstances. Not according to my fears, my doubts. Not according to what others have said that were just critical, mean-spirited about me and about my circumstances. Do you not realize not everybody are rooting for you, Amen. pulling for you? Amen. And the enemy will put people in your path to derail you and cause you to stumble, say mean things. And if, if, if you allow that to lodge in your mind and get into your, your psyche, it will derail you. You, you, you you think you're the worst person that has ever lived. Now, if the devil's going to do something, don't give him any help. Don't give him a stick to beat you with. Don't allow him to rent space in your mind. You choose to speak words of life. Things that will encourage you, that will uplift you. And the, and the way you can do that, if you don't know what to say, start with, your, start with the foundation that you acquired as a new believer, as a child of God. When you accepted Jesus Christ, start saying, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I belong to God. I belong to God. It, you know, 1 Peter, the 2nd chapter, verse 9 declares, You are a chosen race, a raw priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm a child of the light. And if you don't know what to say, start saying, I am forgiven. Because a lot of times we will beat ourselves up over our past. And sometimes some folks put their past on, on, on a mantle and, 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 and just look at it every day. Uh, 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 <laughs> and every now and then bring it out for display as if you don't have a future. Some of us have had a horrific past. I mean, devastating, crushing, detrimental. But if you allow that to lord over you, you're going to stay stuck. But when you declare, I'm forgiven. And some of us, some of us, uh, I, I didn't realize, but I used to have, I used to, used to have a, uh, I wasn't mean-spirited, but I, I, I was sarcastic. I, and I didn't, I didn't realize until someone just said, so, all right, is, that, is that sarcasm? And when they said it, they said it in love. They didn't say it to, to, um, to, to demean or to, to hurt in a hurtful way. But they said it, and I caught it. And I said, you know, they're right. See, some of us try to defend areas that we need to correct. I made the adjustment. I ratcheted it up. Some of you need to make the adjustment. Some, some of you are critical, mean-spirited at times. You, don't, you, don't, you may not say it, but you just said, that's just the way I am. But then change. If you want to have a better life, didn't change. I made the adjustment. I, 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 and, and I began to see areas where I had been sarcastic and I, and I repented. I repented. And it changed. It changed. It changed. 
Sometimes sometime people can say things. Now just think about it. Sometimes people can say things to you that you can't dare say to them. The amens ought to be a lot louder. I hear you out there, virtual conjugates. And think nothing about it. But I made, I made an adjustment. Because they were right. And then I began to think back in areas where some folks call it being sharp. Do you hear what I'm saying? They call it being quick. No, but if, if, it, if it doesn't build up, you need to get rid of it. You need to dump it. So I had to, I had to unload. And sometimes we have so much of that stuff, it takes us a little while to get rid of You, you, you all hear what I'm saying? It takes us a little while to get rid of some of that stuff. Some of we, sometimes we think it's cool, but it's not. Because you have a choice of what you say and the words you use. Now, I know how easy it is to be tempted to regress, especially when somebody pushed the wrong button. <laughs> but we have to learn to stop speaking out of our feelings. Amen. And because all of us are aspiring to be better. Amen. Began to say things that will lift us up, even if a situation, whether it's at work or somewhere else at home or in the neighborhood or in your life where it's, 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 it's uh, spiritual, physical or whatever, and it looks impossible, we still have a choice as to what we say. Because with God, according to Matthew's gospel, the 19th chapter, verse 26, with God, say it, with God, with God. All, things all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. In spite of how the situation looks. Right. Choose to declare, choose to declare, my God, shall supply all my needs. Now somebody need that right now. I got that in this. I caught that. Somebody need, somebody need to, <laughs> you need to wake up with it. You need to go to, you, you need to quote it over your meal uh, uh, this afternoon. And you need to quote it when you go to, go to sleep. Somebody need that. Some, Sometimes we're just casual listeners. But for somebody need that, I sense that, that somebody really need that. Then change what you say. Stop saying, I can't pay my bills. If God is your help, the Holy Spirit is your comforter, then lean on him. You don't see your way through, then lean on him. My God shall supply all my needs. Hello? Choose to declare. Listen, if the devil is offering you poison, you don't have to receive it. Hello? And how is he going to poison your life? Through your words. He's going to convince you, deceive you to say what you are experiencing versus what you need and desire. You still have a choice. Amen. You still have a choice. Even during uncertain times, you have a choice. Even when your world is threatened, your peace is threatened, your joy is depleted, you still have a choice to choose to say, 
I'm, I'm just not going to worry. You have a choice. You have a choice. Now you can worry and get nowhere. You can stress out and get nowhere. Or you can say, I'm just not going to worry. I cast all my cares upon the Lord because he cares for me. Amen. Amen. That's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. God cares for me. That's be it unto me according to thy word, Lord God. Amen? Now, I remember, I remember situations that I've experienced in life And whether individuals, other individuals were involved in it or regardless how I arrived uh, at that point, but situations in life, the more I talked and rehearsed it, the worse I felt. Uh, and I would have difficulty getting it off my mind. Am I, am, am I a, alone? Uh, I, I mean, I would try. People say, forget about it. You, you said, uh, it's hard. You, you, you almost would say, I, I just can't forget it right now, which is a lie. You, you have to trust God. Amen. But for that, at, for that time and that moment, it is a challenge to forget about it. To get it off my mind. So I would stay upset. I would stay upset. And sometimes it can be, it could be something would trigger it. You can be okay. You woke up okay, woke up on the right side of the, uh, of the bed, so to speak, figuratively speaking, and, and something happened either at the bank or the grocery store or somewhere or at the gas station, a filling station that triggered somewhere in between where you were going or where you, you were desiring to go, something happened to trigger something from the past that upset you. And now you're right back in the moment. Stuck. Now, how do you get past it? Because I don't know about you, but I, want to re I, I, I wanted to recapture my joy. So I had to verbally stop going over and rehearsing what happened in the past. Don't rehearse it. Don't rehearse it. Don't talk about it. Now, how do you do that? Because a lot of times we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to stop talking about it. Especially when we are upset. Let me give you the answer to that. This is what I've discovered. In order to regain my joy and to regain my peace, and when the enemy would bring it to my mind, I said, well, you know, I began to... Uh, um, uh, re uh, rehearse the final qualities if it was an individual I think about something good and take it to a high note instead of going to a lower note I kick it up a notch or two and I said well you know they, 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 they just they just they just good they just a good person but the enemy is telling me everything different from that, contrary to that. I say, you know, they're just, they're just a nice person. And I start talking about all their nice qualities because the enemy will, 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 will pinpoint and pick out some fault that you probably have also 
fault and, and, and have you rehearsing it over and over. That's what, the, you remember what, the, what they said? And, and how, he don't say it like that. And you said, boy, Jay, what they said it was just awful. And it hurt. So you're rehearsing the hurt over and over. And the more you rehearse it, the worse you feel. I want to introduce something to you. Stop. Now, what do you mean stop? Stop. S. Stop. Stand. T. Trust. O. Obey. P. Pray. Stop. Stop it. You can stop it. You can stop it. And, and, and this, is what, this, is, this, is what you, this is what you have to say to yourself when others bring it up. When, when the enemy use others to, 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 to bring stuff to your, your, your mind that you don't want to deal with. You say, it is better for me not to talk about that. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't feel it. If you want the fire to die out, don't put anything on it. Stop rehearsing the problem because the promise is bigger than the problem. And the enemy sends hurt in your life to steal, to kill, to rob life from you, to steal your joy. When you continue or choose to continue to, to speak and rehearse negative things, negative words, like one. If you ever heard someone say, you know, I'm just done. I, I've been, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm, I'm just done. That's it, I'm done. What, what they're saying is, I've had enough. I'm fed up. I can't take no more. And sometimes, sometimes, the very children that you have prayed for and asked God to give you will say things like, they're just driving me crazy. <laughs> I just can't take no more. This job is killing me. <laughs> this job is killing me. <laughs> yes. Avoiding, avoiding negative words is only half the battle. Do you hear me? Avoiding negative words, that's just half the battle. With God's help, and you do need his help now, you can learn to line up your words with his promises for your life. Now as you do, your path's going to become clear. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 14, and amplified, says, hold fast our confession. Our confession of faith. And cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in him as Savior. Confession reference or meaning say the same thing say the same thing it is written that's how Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness with the temptations that were brought 
It was a cycle of temptation. Do you think if, if, the, if, if the enemy tempted Jesus that he's not going to tempt you? We're tempted to surrender and compromise. Take the, the, the easy road out. Sometimes it's, it's not easy to love people who are unlovable. You hear things. You see things. And as a result, it affects our emotions. Now, if, now here's the thing, and I just want to say it. If you're upset with what's going on in the news, with, with the news media, secular media, then cut it off. Amen. It's not going to kill you to, to let it go for a while because emotionally you're like a roller coaster. You're up and down. And pick up some good news. Pick up some good news. Pick up something that's going to change your life. You, but you say, but I just want to be informed. Well, okay, you're informed, but you are alarmed. And it's causing you to live in dread and live in fear. And the Lord is constantly telling, telling us, do not fear. Why? Because God is so near. Do not fear. Do not fear. Because God is with you. Now, in spite of what's going on, if God is with you, you're going to make it. There is no challenge that you and I cannot overcome with God's help. I mean, there is no challenge that you and I can't overcome with God's help. That's the word of God. Today, declare, it's going to be a day full of joy and victory. This day, this day, right now, declare, this is the day that the Lord has made and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I choose to overcome. And, and, and choose, make, make, make a decision like Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 50. Four, verse 13 my children and my grandchildren are going to follow God's plan for their lives start confessing that where is the faith if you act progressively will transform your life and it also transform others as well when your words when, when you line up your, your desires and our desires and words with his words and his word and his plans for our lives, he will give us exactly what we need. In fact, I believe it's in Psalm 37. It said, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. How many of you want your desires to, to come into fruition? I certainly do. That means lining up your words with God's word promises. Now, I would be one of the first to admit that I've had to work at it. How many of you, uh, 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 we're in the same boat. And for some of us, it has taken a, 
a, a, a while for us to learn that we are not the, the victims, but the victor. See, see, too many of us have confessed over the years. You say, how you doing? Well, due to the circumstance, under the circumstance, why are you under? Why are you under? Why are you under? No, we, we, we're not undercomers, we're overcomers. And you gotta stop thinking of yourself as somebody having thrown you under the bus. I grew up in the country and the only thing that was under the bus was roadkill. And you don't waste much time with roadkill. Amen. 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 Well, well I, 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 I want to stay on point. As I've studied God's word, that helped me to line up with his words for my life because I got into his promises. Church, if you get into his promises, you get out of your problems. Amen. Your problems won't look so big. His promises are always better and bigger than your problems. And he has an answer. And as I continue to do it, I, didn't, I couldn't do it just one day. I, I had to continue to do it. I, I, I had to stay with it. I had to stick with it. As I continue to do it, and as I was diligent, my whole life changed. My ministry changed. My marriage changed. My relationship with others changed. My level of joy changed. The words we speak really do determine the life that we live. And you gotta stop telling lies on others. What do you mean? Nobody loves me, nobody cares, nobody appreciates me. me. You, don't, you don't know everybody. And if and maybe you're in the wrong circle. Maybe the Lord trying to expand your circle, your sphere of influence. Maybe He's trying to. You know, isn't it amazing how sometimes we can be so glued to 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 and toward people with a negative attitude, and somebody always praising us or trying to encourage us, but we pay them no mind, we don't give them any attention, and we gravitate toward those trying to please somebody who has already told you how they feel about you. When are you going to wake up and discover it's a waste of time? If somebody tell you that they don't like you by their action, then believe them. Because God will have someone. If you become an encourager, God will have someone to encourage you. But stop running after folks who don't care a thing about you. Pray for them, love them, but keep doing what God has called you to do. When people come to me and say, you ought to do this and you ought to do that, because I'm not trying to be like anyone but Jesus. I'm not trying to copy anyone. I'm not trying to follow anyone 
but Jesus. That's the only one I'm trying to please. And it's been life changing for me. I mean life changing for me. Because what you think and what you say. And if you're not careful. If you allow negative thinking. To influence the way you think about yourself. And the way you look at yourself. Before long. That's, that's the direction you'll go in. And you'll find yourself trying to make an adjustment that God has not ratcheted on you, that God has not sent you in. And then as soon as you make the adjustment because man said it, they're going to have another adjustment for you. <laughs> They'll pull you to the left, pull you to the right, stretch you, and you still will not be comfortable or pleased with yourself because they're going to tell you, well, you jumped, but you didn't jump high enough. My challenge to you today is to pray and ask God to help you. To help you begin to say the right things. Because it will change your life. What you say about yourself. What you believe about yourself. Will make a difference. When you give. And I, I'm, I'm so thankful. That I've been forgiven. I mean, I, I've done some stuff. You all may not have, but I have. But I, I, don't, I don't labor in that. Because that's in my past. And, my, and, and God has taken care of my past. And I believe he has taken care of yours too. Now if you want to live there, you go ahead. I'm a, I won't live with you. I won't judge you because of your past. Because all of us have a past. And all of us have to get past our past. And trust God. And love people. And love people. And we also have to give people the break that God has given us. If God has forgiven you, then you ought to forgive others. You ought to forgive others. Not hold anything against you. That's a part of growth and growing. One of the things that you can say to yourself, sometimes, sometimes people will say, well, now, I'm still growing. Mm -hmm. But what do you mean? That's not an excuse to still do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. What are you growing in? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when you have a, a mindset that I'm growing in in grace, I'm growing in love, I'm growing in patience, I'm growing in peace, I, I'm growing in long-suffering. What are you growing? See, you're growing, but what are you growing in? I'm growing in being tender-hearted. I'm growing in forgiveness. Amen. All of us, you can, you'll be amazed at the stuff we can get into in one day if we don't trust God. In fact, if you don't trust God, you'll be taking spiritual target practice, practicing. You'll start practicing on people which you don't want to practice on yourself. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want to you uplift and you want to encourage. You want to encourage folks. Because people are hurting. The world is suffering. And then you need to say, you need to say to yourself, 
Start confessing. I'm sent. The Lord told me to go, to go into the world. I'm sent. You're sent. If you're sent, God, if you're sent, that means you're not spent. That means God has something for you to offer and give to the world. You still have value. You still have value. Do you, are you all listening to this preacher? And I'm loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And as I believe. I'm having life. Start confessing that. Start saying that to yourself. And then start, start declaring. Because sometimes people will call you in and everything but a child of God. Start declaring. Tell yourself. Regardless of what the world tells you. I am a child of God. Now some of you need to say that to yourself. I can look at you and tell. Now some of you need to say that. Say I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. See, listen, listen, when I was growing up, I grew up in the South. And, 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 and uh, you know, mothers, not only my grandmother and mother, but others had free reign. If I was messing up, they, 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 they would just deal with me. Sometimes you got to, and, and, and what they would say, you know, you, you, you know whose child you are, don't you? Remind yourself whose child you are. Amen. I'm a child of God. And a child of God doesn't do any and everything. But as a child of God, I have an inheritance. I'm growing in the grace of God. I'm growing in the love of God. I'm growing. I'm growing. I've been called. I've been called. I've been chosen. Start declaring, I am unique. I am unique. I am unique. And as a child of God, when I cry, Abba, Father, when I cry, Abba, Father, it's the very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. There was a time many, many years ago I had to remind myself. Don't you know how sometimes when you, if, as you grow and you're a Christian and you, and you want to do right and and the enemy reminds you of things you did in your past. And, 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 and if he keeps reminding you, it bombards your mind. It can possibly even become a stronghold. Hopefully and prayerfully you won't allow that. But as you start thinking, you have to almost rediscover yourself. Because what the enemy is bringing to the forefront of your mind is so terrible and let me share with you what happened to me the Lord reminded me he said you remember you asked for forgiveness you've been forgiven now I it shouldn't I shouldn't have allowed that to go on as long as it did so I started reminding the devil he, he, he would bring up my past. I would bring up his future. I said, do you know? Yes, but you know, you're going to spend uh, eternity in the lake of fire. <laughs> and every time he bring it up, I, I, would, I would remind him. I said, you know, you, do you know where you're going to be? And he backed off. Some of you need to get tenacious have, and, and, and begin to declare you are a child of God. Amen? Amen? You are unique. And then, this particular verse, unique. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I am redeemed. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, verse 1.
the Lord has blessed you. I am the blessed, but he's called me by name. Now, it's amazing. Sometimes we forget how awesome it is that God knows our name. Can you imagine someone in a rest home, a nursing facility, and they're just longing for somebody to call their name, to give identity to their personality. Because when they call their name, they're referencing all that they were and are today, their talents, their gifts, their strength. But when God calls your name, he's referencing all that you are, that he has not forgotten you. So sometimes we can live that way, that people, you, people don't, how you say, notice you. And we feel like we have been forgotten, but God has not forgotten you. And he calls you by name. He calls you by name to let you know that you have value. Amen? Remind yourself when others devalue you that God values you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? And that you are blessed. The Lord your God has blessed you in all your undertaking. And he knows you're going. He knows you're going through the great wilderness that we have experienced and are experiencing. He knows. He knows what you're going through and he locates you in your valleys. Amen? And he walks with you and he talks with you but he never leaves you alone. Amen? amen. Say amen, church. Amen. And, and, and he gives you supernatural peace for the journey. Supernatural peace for the journey. Peace for the journey. I mean supernatural peace. And he still hears you when you call. Amen? When you begin confessing and believing his word and his promises, you can rest assured. But you do have a choice now. You do have a choice. I want to encourage you today to begin to speak to the mountains. Stop talking about them. You've talked about them long enough. You've described them long enough. Now start speaking to them so that they can be removed out of your life. Amen? Amen. Be removed and be cast into the sea. That's what he told us in Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, verse 23 through 24. For assuredly I say to you, and this is by choice now, whoever says to this mountain or says to this, their sickness, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive. And, and, and this is what I want you to get. In the Greek it says take. Take them. And you will have them. You got to take it. You got to take it. Whatever I say, you got to take it. You must take the promises of God before you see them. 
You must receive them. You must, you must take them. The enemy is going to fight you. Tooth and nail. He's going to fight you. But you must take it. And the way you take it is by keeping focus. You keep saying it. You do just like the little woman with the issue of blood. In Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, you stay in the press. You stay in the press till you get to Jesus. Tradition may say you don't belong. People may say you don't belong. But you stay in the press until you get to Jesus. For she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. You got to have a place, a destination. You got to have something or some place where you're determined to get to Jesus and you're not going to rest until you get to Jesus. Amen. And then Jesus said, thy faith. Has made thee well. Do you hear me? Her faith. Not Jesus faith. Her faith. God has given you something. You possess it. Now use it. Now. Heavenly Father. This is a prayer of salvation. Pray this prayer with me. And this is still confessing now by choice. I come to you in the name. If you've never invited Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've never said, be it unto me according to your word. You've never, you've never been encouraged to, to accept Jesus. Say this, I come to you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Your word says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see confession now. With thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So Lord I take you at your word. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Thank you for coming into my heart, for forgiving me of all my sins. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit to live, to comfort, to guide, just as you've promised. Thank you for being Lord of my life by way of invitation. I receive and I give you praise and I give you honor. Amen. Amen. Now unto him that is certainly able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And let the church say, Amen, Amen. Now you go in peace. Keep going. Stay on the journey. God has some great things in store for you. He's with you, and he's not going to leave you, and he certainly will not forsake you. You can make it. You can make it. With God, all things are possible. Keep going. Keep moving forward. God bless. We love you. <laughs>